All right, so to trim out the Lazy Susans, I go about it a little differently, and I start by making my own rustic edge banding over on the table saw. <laughs> For the Lazy Susans and the medium sized rounds, I'm gonna do a two step process to trim off all this excess wood. Using the bandsaw first to trim off the excess wood might seem like an unnecessary step, but with these round tops, it's really helpful because then I can trim off the rustic wood as close to the OSB as possible. That leaves me with minimal material to remove when I use the flush trim bit on the router. Less material to remove means less wear and tear on my router bit. What I like to do before I trim off the excess wood is like to run my finger along the bottom and see if there's any nails that happen to shoot out. I just grab them with a the plier, give them a little yank. So I got the plunge depth set on the router and now I'm just gonna start working to take off these edges. Now that I've trimmed off all the excess, I've got a nice smooth surface to which I can attach the trim. And I'm gonna wrap it all the way around all of my round pieces. I'm gonna use a bunch of these Bessie three-way clamps. I love these things, they've been working out really great. When attaching the trim, I like to start by screwing a small block of wood to the workpiece. And this acts like a clamp on the end that I start with. I also like to attach the clamps first, and I also use a piece of scrap underneath one of the clamp pads. That way I don't damage the surface of the rustic wood. Having the clamps on there first can make it a little difficult to apply the glue, you know, in these little spots like that. Not really, I guess it's not that bad. But anyways, it makes it a lot easier to have the clamps here already when I go to put the piece of trim on here, which you'll see in just a moment. So I've got all my glue down for this first strip. And what I'm gonna do is bring this strip in and start feeding it through. And what I'll do is get it over here to my makeshift temporary clamp. Tighten that temporary clamp in. And then I'll use these blocks to secure this third point of contact. Just kidding. I'll use these blocks to secure this third point of contact. I'll just do that all the way around. And unfortunately I don't have enough clamps to get all the way around. So while this sets up, I'll work on something else and then come back in a little bit and carry on. So you might notice that there's three people at work in this shot. There's myself, my wife, and this guy. And it's weird because this guy just showed up one day and started working. I have no idea who it is. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. That guy is my father-in-law. And on these projects where we've had a lot of these tabletops, he's made the five to six hour drive down to help us with it. So if he wasn't here helping us, it would have taken us a lot longer to get these tables cranked out. So Ray, if you're watching this, we really appreciate all your hard work and your help, man. We couldn't have done it without you. Now it's time to add a pop of color to these tabletops. Dealing with the trim on the square tables is really pretty easy. Since it doesn't need to be bent or curved or anything like that, I can just take the wood as is and rip it down to the width I need. Then of course I'll lather it up with some glue. And I'm gonna use these pin nails to just sort of tack it in place so it doesn't move around on me. After that, I drill some pilot holes, and the pilot holes are gonna help to keep the wood from splitting when I hammer in the nails, which you'll see in just a moment. And the nails are used, obviously, to hold the boards in place, but I feel like it kinda goes with the rustic vibe of these tabletops, too. And finally, I'll just break the sharp edges of the rustic wood, and not only does that help keep my hands from getting all splintered up, but it's gonna come in useful later when I'm pouring the epoxy, and that way the epoxy just kinda flows over the edge better. All right, so to trim out the Lazy Susans, I go about it a little differently, and I start by making my own rustic edge banding over on the table saw. To do that, I take some of the leftover pieces of the rustic wood, and I just rip it down on the table saw so that it's the same width as the thickness of the Lazy Susans. 
I also rip the wood along the edges so that it gives me a piece thin enough and flexible enough to bend but without breaking. To attach the edge banding, I'm going to use fast cap speed tape applied around the edge of the Lazy Susan. This stuff comes in a few different widths, so whatever your project calls for, you can probably find a width that's going to work for you. I'm going to start by peeling off the backing. I'm going to attach my edge banding. I've pre-drilled some holes in the strip so that I can attach these nails to it, and I pre-drilled it so that it doesn't crack the wood because this wood is already brittle and fragile, so I don't want to make it worse. Now that I've got the banding attached, I'm going to go ahead and just break these sharp edges with the sanding block. And then once that's done, I'm going to come back to all these colors and I'm going to rough them up a bit with the sander. That way they have more of a rustic look because right now I think they're still too bold and too colorful. So they need to get toned down a little. All right, these are ready for epoxy. <laughs> Well, that's it for part two. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope that you'll give me a thumbs up for this video. If you missed part one and you want to see that, one of these slides is going to have the link to that video. And when I finish part three, which is going to be the epoxy pouring, I'll come back and link one of these uh, slides to that as well. I think I can come back and edit it later, right? If not, I'll just put it down in the description. But if you're not already a subscriber, I would love to have you and stay tuned for more videos in the future. I'm going to have links in the description to some of the products and the tools that I used in this video. And I'll also have links to my blog, website, and my Instagram account so you can give me a follow there as well. So until next time, you guys, thanks so much for tuning in and I'll see you then.